I'd now love to briefly introduce today's filmmakers. Bebe Liu and Mayara Teixeira were two of our Columbia Journalism School reporting fellows in 2023, and we are thrilled that both of them are here joining us for today's screening of After Landing, their film. Bebe Liu is a journalist and documentary filmmaker from China. She graduated with honors from the documentary program at Columbia University's Graduate School of Journalism and holds a bachelor's degree in journalism from the University of Missouri. She has produced video stories for national and local news outlets, including Beijing News, KBIA, and Xinhua News. Bebe currently works as a news associate for CBS News. Mayara Teixeira is a Brazilian journalist specializing in covering human rights stories. She's worked at Rede Globo, the largest media company in Latin America for seven years, covering stories worldwide. She was awarded a full scholarship to pursue a specialization in documentary at Columbia University's Graduate School of Journalism in New York and graduated in August of 2023. Mayara currently works as a reporter for TV Globo. And before we begin our Q&A session, I want to congratulate both of you, Bebe and Mayara, uh, just on this film and want to thank you again for giving us the opportunity to screen it here with our Pulitzer Center community. I've seen it a couple times now and I just, just really value watching it every time. So thank you so much. I have a few questions to, to kind of kick us off here before we open things up to our audience. Uh, and to our audience, please do not forget to go ahead and submit your questions to that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. I see we already have some coming in, so I promise I'll get, get to those soon. I wanna start with um, just this first question of, you know, Obviously, after landing is told through the eyes of Jorge and Yexabel, I'm curious how you initially connected with the two of them um, and how you decided to frame this film around their story. Uh, maybe Mayara, if you would want to speak to that first. Thank you, Libby. Thank you so much for introducing us. Um, me and Bebe, we were living in New York last year because we were attending our master program in Columbia University. And we were trying to catch up with the city, reading the news, trying to understand what's going on. And that's when I read about the buses, the bus, people being bused from Texas to New York without even knowing where they were going to. And I felt something in, in my guts. That's how I knew I, I really had a deep connection with the topic and we, I really wanted to do something about it, to do a story about it. So I started going to Port Authority every day, more than a week, I don't know if I remember right. And I was approaching volunteers. It was really an unprecedented crisis. There were so many people arriving and it was chaotic and a lot of work was being done there. And I talked to as many volunteers as I could. And at some point, that's when I met Jorge and Yexabel. They were just arrived and they were trying to figure out their next steps. And first thing I recorded with them was a voice memo and the voice memo has 40 in two minutes. I just asked them one question and then they, they started talking. They really wanted to be heard and seen. And that's when we realized that maybe we could follow them for for a while. And I think, just to say very quickly, I think Yexabel is here. She was watching the movie, so she's here with us. Did you want to add anything to that, Bebe? Yeah. Um, so I, when I was on board was uh, Mayara, uh, because we're both um, not born and raised in the States. We both come from another country. So we sort of share this kind of loneliness living in a different place. Um, and so, 
and I and we both know that we want to work. We want to um, tell a human story, like a a story that is not only about the facts, the numbers. We don't want to repeat the news coverage. So we did. We tell the story from a very personal perspective. We want to make um, the migrants tell their own stories, not just um, making people see migrants as a set of number, like. 150,000 migrants has poured into the states. We don't want just to repeat the numbers and and some some people make it panic and um the government have their have have issued policy to solve their problems but we barely hear the stories from the perspective of from uh migrants. So that's how we um structured the story and wanted to do the story from a personal angle. I'm looking, we have lots of audience questions here. <clears throat> I'm gonna turn to one of these, um, which is one of our audience members wants to know um, about any big challenges that you face during the production of the documentary. Um, anything you wanna speak to, yeah, in terms of ch challenges. Bebe, maybe if you wanna speak to that. Yeah. One of the big challenges is, as we mentioned a lot of a lot of times, um, is the balance between the role of being a professional journalist and also being just a normal person who witness all the challenges um, in all the suffering of with these real people in their real life. So sometimes um, it's hard to say what's the right um, boundary between the sources and um, we as journalists. And I believe Mayara has more um, to add to it because um, she was with them in a lot of important moments where they need help. And um, I believe the presence of camera is very powerful because it sometimes changed, the, not change the reality, but definitely have an impact on the reality. And um, that could change a lot of things. Sometimes it's sometimes it's good thing. Sometimes it's bad. It's it's a negative impact. But um, we are super aware of the power of camera, and we want to tell the story um, from an authentic, authentic way. Yeah, maybe I can add up on that. <laughs> I think our relationship sh shift after Canada after Christmas because they were having a hard time up there and it was Christmas Eve. They were feeling lonely, really missing their kids. And in a way I was feeling lonely myself and I was missing my family. So I think that specific night really bounded us. We created a different relation after that experience. So things were getting a little bit more complicated and when it comes to separating the boundary between reporter and sources, journalists and characters. And we had to face um, some dilemmas, but I think we really, we were able to build trust in them. So they, they've been through many things, many difficult times, and they always called us saying, do you want to be here with us? So they were they kept inviting us to be there to document to film because they knew how important what they are going through was to portray what was happening with a lot of people that were arriving in New York. So I think we made uh, we already talked about that many times me and Bebe. I think we made some mistakes along the way. We made some things right, but the best thing that we could do and we did with this film was to connect them with institutions. So we connect them with the nonprofit that is helping Venezuelans. We connected them with the lawyer so they can have now a long-term help. They can have a long term people that really are going to be able to help them in their new life in New York City. Thank you both so much for speaking to that. Um, throughout the film, we obviously see Jorge and Yexabel confront some very significant challenges, you know, not limited to the asylum process, the move to and from Canada, 
um, as well as the separation from their families, their loved ones, their children back in Venezuela. I'm curious what you want viewers to know or understand about how your characters responded to those challenges. Um, I can start with it. Um, I feel like one of the main takeaway of this whole process is we noticed that many migrants, they're not uh, well informed about the process of applying for asylum. Um, even we as a journalist, we later on, we realized there's a one year deadline for like since the first time you enter the United States and then um, you will lose the chance to apply for asylum. And um, our subjects, they didn't realize it, I think, until the summer. It's almost half a year after they um, entered the States. So it was really through the nonprofit organization and volunteers help so that many migrants can get resources and information about how to apply and how to um, um, apply for uh, affordable housing, um, you know, how to connect with their community. So they're really, um, really, really give the help to um, what migrants need and the whole, throughout the whole process. Mayara, do you have anything you want to add to that? I think we've been there. That that's it. I think the process is very complicated and bureaucratic, and they are not aware. They are when they arrive, they have so much going on, and and they have so many feelings that they have to deal with. They have their families. And they are their struggle is uh, so huge. I think the main thing for us was being with them while they were trying to get a job. That was the most difficult part, I think, because they could not form work formally. So they had to find jobs under the table. And there there were so many bad proposals that would be very complicated for them if they accepted it. So it, I think the process, the entire process is very, um, it's very hard to navigate. And they are just dealing with their personal issues so i think that's it that's it uh, they they are not aware and even us we had to try to keep reading to we we had to talk with the lawyer so many times to ask him what's the next step what's the next step this also another thing i was wondering about watching the film and now listening to to you guys speak is um you know, maybe some things that you yourselves kind of learned or revelations you might have had about the asylum seeking process in the U.S. Um, anything you might want to share with our audience in, in regard to that? Me, Mayara, if you want to start? I think even with the policy that United States had at that specific time when they arrived in the United States, the doors were kind of open, but even during that period it was complicated to really settle down, to really find a place to live, to find a job, to, to be able to just um, earn enough money to, to have food. They were, they were living in the shelter, in a hotel shelter. And then after, uh, I think six months, they were evicted from that place and they had to figure out where they were going to leave. So I think uh, I, this was an unprecedented crisis in New York City and I'm not sure um, they, they were, I'm not sure if the government of New York knew what was happening in the beginning. So what we saw was a lot of reaction as I have some figures, it's impressing. Like in 2021, there was just 15,000 Venezuelans living in New York City. And since 22, there are now uh, 136,000. It's such a huge number of people. And I think they were not prepared for that. I don't know if anybody wants to add that. Yeah, um, I think there's a gap of information um, like there's, we all knows from the news coverage that the government spent billions and millions of dollars into the hotel, the food, um, 
And it sounds like a lot of resources has been given to the migrants. But um, when we really get to report and it turns out that many migrants, they don't have like the channels to know this information, except from the, the nonprofit organization and the volunteer. Um, so it's really important to connect them with their own communities and and the and, and receive help from the nonprofits. And it's super expensive to find a lawyer. And thanks to Carlos, the lawyer of Ixaba and Jorge, he agrees to do a pro bono for them, but they're super, super lucky. Um, many other migrants, they don't have the same resources. There are a few people in our in our Q&A box asking some technical questions about filmmaking. So maybe I'll pivot to one of those. Um, and our audience members are curious, you know, for those of us who don't have as much knowledge as of filmmaking as the two of you, um, if you can speak a little bit to how you kind of go about planning and envisioning a story while, you know, following someone's real life that you don't know where it's going to go. Um, I'm sure that's a challenge uh, and would be curious to to hear your thoughts on on that process. Bebe, if you maybe want to start. Yeah, um, I think it's a constant process of discussing and replanning everything. Um, because life always gives us surprises. And um, we as filmmakers, we need to figure out the the beginning, middle and end of the story. So um, I feel like every time when we finish filming, we will have the discussion about what happened today, what the, the, the scene we captured today could be, um, like what, what, which part it could be. It's in the beginning, middle, or end, and what kind of start, um, like starting scene we want to, um, we want to build, and um, how to explain their characters and build their characters and explain their life better. So it's a, I would say it's a constant like discussing um, process. Um, it's also a lot of learning along the way. I think we didn't know in the beginning that this is go was going to be a love story because in mm -hmm. the end it is a love story, right? It's about yeah. their relationship and the, how their relationship shifts while they are trying to settle down. And this was a surprise for us and it came along the way. So we had to reframe some things and there are a lot of things that we filmed that did not end up in the movie because they are not related to their relationship and how things were shifting. So it was, we had a lot of discussions and, and we always um, try to structure the story around their relationship. So that, that, that was in the back of our minds when we were, we were choosing which scenes to put in the final cut. And obviously while watching the, the film, we see, you know, very emotional moments where you it's, it's very clear that the two of you as filmmakers really connected with your sources with your subjects as as you spoke to um a little bit earlier and a few of our questions in in the q a box are wondering um you know how to go about building trust and i'm sure it's different in the documentary space when someone's you know face their whole being is on screen versus, you know, maybe text written journalism. Um, if there's anything you'd want to add to that. Mayara. Yeah, I think um, I, I was very clear about my intentions since the beginning. So the first time I approached them, I told them I want to do a documentary and I want to be around for a long time. And because I was super sincere, I got a lot of no's. But I knew that if I I was telling the truth and, and if someone was on board with me in that idea, I, I, I knew that the project would go, was going to be better because I would have someone that was open to share their lives. And every time that I said them, I'm going to be there with you, I was there with them. I never, I think, 
when you're talking about building related trust in a relation, you, I never said it. If something bad happens and they call me and I say, I'll be there. I, I was there filming always with the camera, but I, I never said I was going to be in a place that I couldn't be. So I kept my promises every time that I promised them something, I did it. I think that that is one way that I think about right now that I, I use I use as a strategy to be trusted them. I know Bebe, you wanna um I think being there with them in the important moments and make their story be seen and told um is a, a way like um of building the trust because Jorge and Isabel they really want their story to be seen by the audience audience and um we just especially Mayara we just try whatever we can to be there um every time when they called up on uh, they call Mayara and yeah I was I would say it's to be there and spend time with them I'm curious um, what the two of you hope that after landing brings to the conversation um, or just the representation of experiences of migrants in the U.S. Bebe, if you would want to start. Yeah, um, I think it's it's. What I mentioned earlier that um, we want people to see migrants as human beings, not just a set of numbers. They're just like normal people like you and me. They're just um, a part of the city where people work hard to survive, to to provide for their families. Um, so we tell the story from a very personal perspective and we want people to resonate with um, the challenges uh, they've experienced and the challenges of their relationship. And um, I, I I really appreciate the opportunity to, to kind of produce this story. Um, I think for, for some people, maybe they, um, they don't care that much about like the, the group of people that are totally different from them. They're from another country, have no, uh, you know, overlapping experience with them. But um, journalism is something that I think, um, like what make pe what made journalism move forward is people's desire to communicate with different groups of people and their desire to see and understand the world. Um, so I, hopefully this film can bring more perspectives on migrant story. I think we wanted to we wanted to show that their lives is not just about migration. They are having the same problems that we all have. So they are fighting, like a husband and wife, they're fighting. So the kid wants to watch TV and not to talk with the mother. They are having the same they they have like a life as we all do. So we can look at them not just in the perspective of asylum seekers and migrants. We can look at their lives in a whole com more more complete way. I think that was our our intention since the beginning to bring a little bit more than just the migration. As you mentioned earlier, Mayara, you know, you admitted, you know, you felt like there were mistakes made along the way, which I'm sure. All, every single journalist can relate to. And I know some of our fellow student reporting fellows are here in the audience. I'm sure that's something they can relate to as well. Um, and a couple of our audience members have asked in the Q&A, um, looking back on this experience, is there anything, um, maybe name like one thing you might, you wish you could have done differently or would have done differently, if, if anything? It's a hard question. <laughs> I think we did the best we could in the conditions that we had. When we talk about mistakes, it's because sometimes um, it, it happened more, it happened after filming. 
So we spent a whole year filming them. And once the filming was over, then we didn't have the journalists and source relation anymore. And that that's when things got a little, a little bit more complicated because they were struggling. They were being evicted from the shelter. We were ready and we are not filming anymore. We, we decided this is going to be the end of the story. This is where it ends. And But their life kept going on, right? They, they had the, their issues where they kept going. So that's when we had to rebuild the relation. Now we are not filming anymore, but we do have a relation here and we are still working on in this project. So how do we figure out how to keep, um, but I, I don't know. I think, I think we did the best we could. And many times I called Bebe and I told her this is happening, what we should do. We had a lot of ethical discussions among us and with our professors and mentors as well. I think I I if I could I would be filming them more. That's what I would change because we had classes, so we had to film when we had a free time in our spare time. If I could, I would be twenty four seven like I, I would be filming them more, m more time. I don't know, baby. Do you, would you change something? No, I I think you're right. I think we've tried our best to do. Uh, to to film and um, to react to the emergent situations, um, but I would say it's very um, a pretty much learning process for both of us. And only by making mistakes we know what is uh, the right thing to do next time. So we learn from our mistakes, and um, yeah, I think we've tried our best. Another big question I'm seeing over and over um, in the chat as we slowly start to wrap up um, is if there are any updates that the two of you are able to share on Jorge and Yexabel. Um, our audience is really curious to know if you have anything to share about their situation. And yeah, I'm, I'm curious as well. Mayar, if you want to, or if, if yes. there's... I think Yexabel is here in this call. I love her to speak if she wants to. But um, they called me last week saying that they got a work permit. So now they are able to find a job, a formal job, and, and get a, a more well-paid position. So this is huge. It's huge news for them. We are super happy. Both of them got the, the work permit. They're still working in the asylum application. They already submitted it, but they are waiting for the interview. But they got the work permit. That's the most recent news I got from them. Well, that's great to hear. And thanks for, for sharing it with us. I think the the last question I I would love to ask the two of you um, is just if there is you know a single takeaway you want to leave with our audience. Or, and I apologize. There's so many questions, so many amazing questions in our chat, and I wish we could answer them all. But I'd love to hear just a takeaway from from this experience uh, of creating after landing from both of you. Maybe Bebe starting. Mm -hmm. Um. So I I think we've touched on that a little bit earlier, but um, I think as a journalist, um, we really want to bring more uh perspective on important topics. Um, as we mentioned before, a lot of we can see a lot of news coverage about migrants at the beginning of this um whole situation. Um, but I think more importantly is the audiences, the readers, and all of us can can have the desire to to know a little bit more about the migrants and pay more efforts to know about them and their situation, their challenges. Um, because sometimes the facts and numbers, I think it's not enough to explain a complexity of uh these um, com complex issues. Um, so I hope there could be more understanding and our work can bring more 
channels for people to see different uh, aspects of the situation. Going the same line, I think um, we really want to people to feel empathy and connect to them. And I, I think migration is going to be a central topic during the next presidential election. I, I really hope there could be more works that can really listen to these people, to listen to people that are arriving and leaving and they have so much going on. I think they need to be heard and seen and that's what we really try to do with this project. And I think you've both very, very successfully done that and just want to congratulate both of you again. And at the Pulitzer Center, we're really, really thrilled that after landing is, is part of the yeah Pulitzer Center community. I really appreciate um, all both of your answers and, and thank you to our audience for your fantastic questions. Again, I'm sorry I couldn't get to all of them. Hopefully the conversation doesn't have to end here. Uh, but for this webinar, that is all the time we have in terms of questions. Uh, so again, Bebe and Mayara, thank you so much um, for sharing after landing with us. Uh, my colleague Jazzy Gray has shared the link to your project page on in the chat here. Uh, for those of us in the audience, please do check out the other work that these two have produced and that is now featured on our website. 